this is Natalie the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche bringing you another video, hopefully one that you enjoy. I'm very happy that people are um, gaining something from these videos. I appreciate everybody watching and people commenting. So keep at it because it makes me feel loved. No, just kidding. <sighs> anyway, it's a Friday afternoon. I just got home from work today. It's been a pretty uh, busy week, but I was lucky enough to get home on the early side on Friday. It's around 4 o'clock, so yay! I have my house cleaning lady here today, which is the best investment you can ever make in yourself is to have somebody clean your house. and. I used to have her every other week and now she's here every week and I figured this is a great opportunity. My husband's not home. The dog has been walked. A great opportunity to sit and have some peace and quiet. Oh, I do have stuff to show you today and what else are we gonna do? Oh, I came home and checked the mail and look what's here. Punch needle and primitive stitcher. A nice, heavy, Heavy one. I also have some new um, linen that I bought. Actually, some really interesting stuff because I've never seen it before and um, it's relatively new. Somebody just began making this. Well, I guess he always has, but. And I do have a, a finish. Where should we begin? Let's begin with the finish. So, I brought the, this is the original, this is by Margaret and Margaret, it's called the Christmas Village Sampler. Can you see it? Originally done uh, with DMC or JP Coats or Anchor on, it was done on 25 count natural dark linen. Okay. So, we... We just, we just did this chart. Uh, there are charts on the back, smaller ones besides that. I didn't do any of these. Somebody wants to buy this chart from me, so um, I'm going to give it to her for what I paid for it, which is $4.50, which is the original price. Anyway, I know you're dying to see the finish. This is the vintage cross-stitch niche version. Can you see it? Oh, it's got a wrinkle. I hate that. <laughs> Let's hold it against something. Maybe you won't see the wrinkle. That wrinkle's going to drive me crazy in the video. So, just to hold them together, um, it's going to be hard to do, but we've got the original and the vintage cross stitch niche version. I think it came out lovely. I really did. So, the differences between this and this. I changed the fabric. I did this on 36 count. Was it 36 or 40? No, 36 count homespun by R&R. R&R linens are no longer as variegated as they used to be, no longer as grungy as they used to be, but I did it on R&R. On R &R. I did it with an over-dyed thread conversion, which if anybody's interested in doing this, I will give you the conversion that I did. And then I antiqued it, and then I over-sewed it so we can top mount it. So that's the difference. Now, a lot of people ask me about the quote-unquote antiquing process. So I want you to look closely as I talk so, so I can tell you about the antiquing process and how you make this look like an antique sampler. Okay? So I hope, I hope you don't hear that. That's going to drive me... Well, it's just a, a vacuum. Um, so... Here's what you do. First off, you have to antique your linen. I much prefer, 
hold on, let me, let me put a sock in the door, hold on, that's better. Okay, so first, you stitch your, your colors on a piece of linen. Don't, I mean, you can do this with Ada, absolutely can do the same process, but I'd first stitch it on whatever your fabric is in the colors that you think look a little bit more antique, meaning slight variegations are perfect. As you can see, look at the, you can see it especially in the red. You want a little bit of variegation because, you know, in antiques, have been exposed to, let's say, the sun, the elements, um, maybe water in areas, so they're never going to look perfect. Or if they do, I would question that they're actually an antique. So that's what you do. Then afterwards, either before or after, I did mine afterwards because I, I thought maybe I was going to leave it on the fabric, but I wasn't 100% happy with how the fabric looked. So I did mine afterwards. I dipped, took the whole thing and dipped it in tea. Strong black tea. I use tea powder. Powdered tea, which you can buy on Amazon or who knows where else, but that's where I get mine because it comes in a big, in a big container. So I get the powdered tea and I dip it if I just want a slight tea dye, then what I do is I'll just rinse it, dry it, and go on with the process. If I want an even more antique look, I will actually put the whole thing in the oven. Now, putting your stitching in the oven sounds brutal, but I assure you it is not brutal. You can do it. You can, you can just put it in for a few minutes so that you get some of these brown spots. You see the brown spots? It's not burnt, it's just where the tea, for example, let's say right here, the tea gets cooked a little bit. Also, your colors might run if you have non-color fast, especially over dyed linen. Um, I think most of this stuff is pretty um, is pretty color fast nowadays, but it, not all of it. So if it runs, that's okay because you want it to look antique. Okay? Because you want it to look antique. So now you've done it. You have stitched it to your liking. You've first off, you've changed the color scheme to something that you feel looks would looks like it came from the 1800s or to whatever color scheme you want, or maybe not, <laughs> whatever color scheme. You stitch, you dip in either coffee or tea, either or, you can experiment with different colors. And remember, whatever base you have is going to make a difference to what the final is going to look at. And how, how the thing that makes the difference in the actual color is the base color, the strength of the tea or coffee or whatever else you're using, or the um, and uh, the the strength. Meaning, if you have a very strong tea, obviously a, mo a lot more than a weak tea. I highly suggest you use a very strong tea or coffee mixture because. It, it takes a lot. Uh, if you do it very lightly, you're not even going to see it, and you're going to rinse. Then you either, and how long you, you keep it in there for. So let's see, that's base color of fabric, base color of fabric, uh, the strength of the tea or coffee or whatever you're using, how long you, you leave it in soaking, and then if you bake it or not. These are multiple factors that are going to be crucial in the final color that you get. So you 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 do you do that, okay? And then finally, if you want it to look like a real old sampler, they all are sort of hemmed and stitched, most of them. So you you have to measure carefully 
and then take off some of the strands of the of the linen that you're using and use that as actual thread and just gently sew it and you can see I, I tried to sew it just a basic stitch and hand sew it because that's what they would have done then you're going to probably would be nice is to over um, is to put this on top of the mat not under it look what I have behind me just to show you can you see that can you see it that's on the wall that is done in a similar fashion as you can see the color is completely different it's a different technique of dyeing your fabric but it's it's over the color so you can see that. So that's how you antique. I had people asking me, how do you antique fabric? Well, this is how you antique fabric. And don't be afraid to bake your fabric, to iron your fabric, to soak your fabric. Uh, don't be afraid because linen's really tough and I think it does just fine. I really do. There is something about walnut, I will tell you. Oh, and do me a favor, rinse it. <laughs> rinse it after you have after you've soaked it or whatever in your in your thing. Otherwise, you're going to have fabric that you're going to be working on and the color is going to come off in your hand or on your clothes, which you will not be happy with. So, rinse rinse it. Just rinse it. Dry it either on a you can dry it on the line or in the dryer if you want a more gentle color. Once again, in the oven if you want a more variegated color. This came out great. I was incredibly pleased. I hemmed and hawed about doing it. I was a little afraid, thinking, oh gee, what am I going to do to my piece? And I, I love it. I think it came out great. So I'm going to bring this to the cross stitch cupboard tomorrow. Along with my others that I did not, I uh, have not, I have not at all um, finished yet. These are Calico confectionery, they're going to be pillows. This is a tea and coffee dyed as well, striped linen. This is going to be a pillow. And this one says Mary Yule. Beautiful. This one says Bah Humbug. And these are just going to be made into, uh, into pillows. And I'm not doing it myself. I really don't feel like having imperfect pillows. <laughs> And the backing on these pillows is going to be a cranberry. I think it's just a, a plain cotton fabric in cranberry that I think will coordinate nicely with them. And to give these pillows pizzazz, just to let you know, I do have some handmade lace. This stuff used to be cheap, 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 and now it's more expensive and harder to find. Handmade lace trimming. I think we're going to Put that on the pillow as well. They're going to be just luscious, just beautiful. So we've got our trimming. So these are two coordinating pillows. What's going to coordinate them is that this is exactly the same fabric, just cut in half. Same background fabric. Um, it'll have the same, same sort of uh, backing and uh, some lace. I have two different laces. I think I'm going to do each one in a different lace, but they're both the same, very similar genre and color. This one's also magnificent. It's so pretty. I think somebody just hand made this. Beautiful. I wish I'm not taking up lace making. <laughs> but those have to go to the cross stitch cupboard. I know I've showed you this before, but I figured might as well show everything. Um, and then, in terms of antiquing, this is Hannah Carter. I think there was somebody who wanted to buy this from me, and I don't remember because I, I still have the, uh, I still have it. Well, you know what? No, I don't. I think I made a copy of this. <gasps> I know I gave the chart to somebody, but I just made a copy of it just to see the original colors it's not and it's just the top part it's not a chart it's just the top piece so just to let you know but i have a uh, hannah carter which needs to be i couldn't do in the over dye technique oop upside down but i didn't but hannah carter's lovely oh it needs to be ironed but that's okay 
And this, Hannah Carter, is going to go in one side of this antique frame. Remember, this is a frame that I bought at the antique show, which I'm going to have to find another one this size, but I think I actually did the measurements and it's going to fit perfectly. <laughs> can you see? Let's see if I can get that in there. I think you got the effect. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be real beautiful. I'm going to have to do another measurement again, make sure the hole is going to fit. I think I did already. Let's see. How are you going to do that? Well, you're just going to fold it over. She's going to frame it, actually. And we can see if it will fit. And it will. It'll fit perfect because this you don't really need much border with the old samplers. Okay. So now we've got a bunch of stuff to bring to the cross stitch cupboard. I do have some things to pick up as well. Okay. So we have finish. Well, almost finish. By the way, these old bowls, they're beautiful. They're great for keeping your stuff in, for putting your smalls in. I just love them. This one is made by Hall China, and I forgot the name of it. It's called... Hmm autumn leaves or something like that but this is an autumn colored one I've used this now because it's autumn see okay All right. now to show you what I'm currently working on um finally started Hannah Carter excuse me Harriet Salt this is of course by hands across the sea samplers it is called Harriet Salt it's beautiful. I've seen it done. I actually dyed this linen. I, this is 46 count. It's supposed to be. I checked it yesterday. I think it's 44, but it's going to work. This is 46 count tea dyed linen. The actual silk I'm doing this is Gloriana Tudor silk, okay, which is their thinner silk. It looks somehow redder in the package than it does on here, but I think ultimately it's going to be beautiful. So doing this on 44 count, 44 to 46 count, I'll say. And it's going to be lovely. I think this is, I tried to get the fabric color close to what I saw, and it's I, almost identical. So this Hannah Carter is probably one of the most relaxing things that I have ever stitched. It is all one color. For whatever reason, you're just doing these different patterns in the one color, so it's not boring because you keep, you're changing patterns. And the reason, by the way, that I did I sort of started at one end, I'm trying to go to the other, is I want to make sure this, this fabric is wide enough given the fact that it's not really 46 count, it's 44. So I just want to make sure there's plenty. Um, there's a cat hair because my cat sat on this yet the other day, but oh, cat hair everywhere. He's very attracted to the sampler, but um, I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. I really do. And... Uh, I don't think it's going to take as long as, well, I usually underestimate, but I think these have the potential to go pretty quick because it just, it just moves. You don't have to think about changing colors. The patterns are somewhat repetitive. Then there's a whole bunch of letters and numbers, which I find to be uh, pretty, pretty reassuring and, and nice to stitch. So that's what I'm currently working on. I'm going to the cross stitch cover tomorrow. And I'm not going to bring this because I need, I need to like sit in a certain way. The way I stitch is I put my feet up. Hi, that's my foot. <laughs> I put my feet up and I wear my, my, um, these are mag eyes. And I just sort of hold this up like this on my knee and I stitch with two hands. 
Um, it doesn't. Look, it looks awkward here, but it really isn't. Um, especially if I'm nice and comfortable and I'm doing this and I'm stitching with two hands and it, it works very well for me. Can't do that at the cross stitch cupboard. And this is sort of big to lug around. I'm actually going to maybe, what I was thinking is that we're gonna go over this. I'm gonna just really quickly kit up something from here. Um, they're small and, and take this with me to do tomorrow. I'm sure I can do it. In fact, maybe we can kit it up together. A group kit. All right. Oh, just one, one quick thing. I meant to show you this about antiquing linen. This is one of my earlier old linen pieces. By the way, this is Lone Elm. And Alleluia, I believe is the name. I don't remember. I think that's what it is. It's got my initials on it right there. And this is a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful pattern. This is all hand dyed by me as well. And I think this is about 36 count as well. 36, 40 count, 36. In the, in the call for colors. And as you can see, I baked this, bef uh, I, I baked the fabric, dyed and baked it before I stitched on it. And the one that I just did, I dyed and baked after. Um, they're two different colors because just everything was different about them. The base color was different, the base color is different, the uh, dye is different, this one's coffee, more coffee, this is just tea. Uh, everything's different. Um, but we, we did a... I think that when you do it after, because it, it dyes your it also sort of dyes your stitching itself. It has a different look. If you want to antique your sampler, do something small. Get a small, maybe an ornament sized, and try some of these techniques and see how it works for you. Once again, if anybody wants any linen to be made, I do make the striped linen, the sampler linen, which is what uh, that is Louisa Snow is done on, and I do make uh, this kind of linen, if anybody wants. Uh, I guess we could put this up front. I have my pillows out all year. <laughs> I like doing that. Um, so I think that's enough about antiquing your linen. Uh, although I do have... Oh, I forgot. Hold on. I do have a, something else I started briefly. This is Stacy Nash 12 Days of Christmas sewing roll. This picture, I believe, is awful. It, it's so red, it cannot be. It's just everything looks a little distorted in this picture. So I, I sort of picked out a bunch of colors from my stash, which I think go very well together. And I have an extra piece of this, um, I think this is 40 count dyed fabric and I started this and all I have done is just this piece and I think it's gonna look nice at first I was like yeah I don't know but the more I look at it and if you look at this it almost looks stri like striped linen so the more I look at it the more I say you know what I think this will work so that's one I'm sort of I just started just to see how it would look okay that we've got that on to the new stuff this is a unicorn so to speak a unicorn meaning I have been looking for this for a very long time it's the primitive needle God bless us everyone I had to get it I love the primitive needle I love primitive needlework I do want to put this on a Lone Elm Lane box like I did my other, uh, my other piece. Just to, to reiterate, let me show you the Lone Elm. Oop, I'm going to break my thing. This is a Lone Elm box, once again with my own dyed linen, but a Lone Elm box. So I want to put, uh, I want to put the, uh, this on a box. I think it's going to be the right side. This 
It says that the stitch count is, I haven't even opened this, let's open it. Definitely looks like it's been used before, which is a good sign that it's not bootleg. I don't think it is. But the uh, stitch count's 97 by 99, so it's going to be a square. So I should be able to find a box. And it's not very big. But I really wanted this. I, over, I paid more than I usually pay for something like this, but I know I'd be able to resell it. Unfortunately, these are all really out of print. The family is not, uh, not making them anymore. And some of the patterns go for well over $100. I did not pay that, but I did pay more than I wanted to. But I had to have the unicorn. And when it came up, it's on my, it actually bought it on eBay. It was on my eBay alert. I had to buy it. So that's new. Um... I have something I forgot to show you. Let me just put a hold on, on new for a second and just uh, show you progress on another whip, which is RW and BABC by Needlework Press. It's really pretty, right? Once again, striped linen effect. You can do this on striped linen. Would look great, but I didn't because I'm doing this on an antique piece of worked needlework. See, it's already got this beautiful working to it. It's gonna look so pretty when it's done. It's gonna have to have something on the back to sort of hide, hide the, uh, you know, cause it's see-through. So you've gotta put some sort of backing on it, but that's okay. It's gonna look fabulous. It really is. And I'm already running out of some Thread. I'm doing this two over. It, it is about 23, 24 count. Not exactly even. It's hard to stitch because it's so loose and soft that you can't really stretch it and put it on any, on a roll of frame or anything. And I would never put this on a Q-snap. It's actually hard to stitch, even though it's not that much stitching. But it's coming out sort of big. It is going to fit perfectly on this piece, so. And... I'm not, I'm using some of the call for threads. Um, I'm out of, seriously, like running out of thread because it's a, it's just big. It's just taking up a lot of thread coming off anyway. Forgot to show you that whip too. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, on to new stuff. So I showed you the unicorn. Where's my unicorn again? Showed you the unicorn. There you go. God bless us, everyone. Here's another new find. This is called A Sampler for Christmas by Blue Whale. I never would have bought this. I would have passed it up until I saw somebody on one of the, on one of the pages post their finish. Don't look like much here, but it was beautiful beautiful when it was done. It's so pretty. And it's very simple. I mean, it doesn't look like it would take that long. This was originally modeled on quote-unquote brown linen. Well, you know, you can tell when it was done because it wasn't... Uh, and Brenda, uh, Glenda Carr is the person, and it says, my thanks to Ginger, Ginger Schrader for her chalkware adaptation of Father Christmas. I don't know what that means. Oh, those chalkware, those. But anyway, it's, um, I think this was like $4 on eBay. It was really cheap. My hair's all over, but it was really cheap, and it's going to be lovely. Even that little motif that's down there is really cute. So, this is a new one. Oh, a new Stacy Nash. This is a kit. Looks like it's open at the bottom, but that's okay. Called To My Sweet. It's fabulous. Isn't that pretty? Country Sampler to My Sweet Pin Keep. I have a feeling this was a club kit. 
Um, let's see what's inside. I didn't even open this, but once again, that's a good picture. These are good photographs. And it's got some absolutely luscious, beautiful red, red velvet. It's got a piece of linen, <laughs> yay, and it's got this nice, it, this is over dyed. If I had to guess, this is raspberry parfait. I think that's what this is called. What is, let's see if it says, see if I can guess that. Nope, it's hollyberry. Anyway, it is a little pillow. This is a quick, quick, quick stitch, and I'm sure somebody will, when I'm done with it, somebody will want, will want the pattern, because I don't think you can buy this pattern. Um, the thing about, she, I think this is done on the plain linen. It certainly doesn't look plain there, but let's see. Does she say to antique it after? She, she usually puts that in her directions. Wear and age, wear the velveteen using the blade of your scissors to scrape against the grain of the velvet. Not doing it. If Stacy Nash is washing this, I am not doing that. That would drive me nuts. But it says, this will pull out tufts of velvet, of velvet exposing the cotton backing. Then it says, age with small batch of walnut crystals mixed so it looks like a strong cup of coffee, brush liquid on the pin keep with a paint brush, place on a cookie sheet, with a towel and then cover the pin keep with another old towel, dry in a 250 de degree oven, repeat, repeat until desired aging is achieved. I think I'm going to age the fabric first. It's easier for me. And then I don't want to really put on my couch a pillow or put in my hold a pillow that's got walnut crystals on it. Um, I'd rather use coffee or tea than walnut crystals, although maybe I'm wrong. Um, somebody, I, I don't know where I read that walnut can, is not good for your fabric. But that, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And please let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway. Uh, that's new. Let's see. Ah! Let's see what else. Uh, we have... Some new fabric. Then I have some new antiques to show you. Where do you see it? Where do you see it? I got this is R and R twenty count linen in Victorian red. It is way unavailable. Once again, I, I bid on this on an auction, and it's sealed. I'm not going to open it. Bid on this on an auction, and want it for so much less than I thought think it's worth. <laughs> this Victorian red is absolutely beautiful. I think the old R and R with the variegations is fabulous, is nicer than some of the new stuff. It's just my opinion. So what can you do with twenty this is what twenty two count or twenty count? You can make a pillow. This is twenty count. And this is Brenda Gervais. This is Letters from Santa on 20 count, done with three threads. Comes out great. So I can make a Christmas pillow with this. That's what exactly what I would do with this. This was the bargain of all bargains. I'm very happy to have it. Um, this stuff was retail, but I got this from Kitten Stitcher. I went on her on her website and she and this is not made by Kitten Stitcher. This is made by her son, Graham. And he calls this Graham Cracker. <laughs> Graham Cracker fabric. And I've never seen this before. Well, she hardly had any of it left, and it is all sold out now. But I got three different colors of it just to try it, just to have it. This is 40 Count Pumpkin Muffin. It is nice. Now again, this is not all natural dyed. My stuff is all natural dyed. This is obviously something very orange in here. But this is called Pumpkin Muffin. It's beautiful. Very pleased. This is 40 count. I wish everything I got was 40 count, but they were at, you know, it was done. This is 32 count pie crust. 
you can see, it almost has a little bit of a greenish tint. I didn't realize it did, but it does. And I, I actually have something I think would go very well on this. So hold on, let me find that. And this is, no, that is not pie crust. That is pistachio. This is pie crust, 32 count pie crust. Excuse me, this is the 32 count pie crust. That's real nice. I hope you can see the color in this lighting. It's real nice. This is 36 count pistachio and I have the perfect thing for it. Hold on, let me get it. Okay, here we go. Stacy Nash Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. See how antique that look? It looks green what this is done on and so is this. This pistachio, my God, this is it. I have been looking for fabric for this for a long time, but this pistachio, I really hope it's coming out as pistachio green, but it looks like a very light pistachio green is the same color that's in the sampler. I'm not sure this color is going to come out right on there because I'm seeing the screen and it doesn't, but it's all, it's all due to lighting and everything, but it's perfect. 32 count. I didn't want to... Oh, it looks like more than 32 count. No, oh, no, 36 count. Oh, I'm so confused. 36 count pistachio. Got the floss. <laughs> now on the floor. I'm just going to pull out all these colors. You can see them. On this 36 count pistachio by Graham Cracker. It's going to be fabulous. Wow. I, I sort of like the green for the Christmas sampler. I've seen this done. Um, Saltbox Stitcher did this, and um, hers is unbelievable. But now I can put this away. I love like having things kitted up, just ready to go. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I'm so happy. All right. So that's my, my new fabric. Um, this is really nice. So Graham, her son, has these fabrics called Graham Cracker. And they're lovely. They're amazing. And I got this card that says it's got a little, um, it's got a little uh, freebie pattern here. And it says, many thanks from Teresa and I for your support. Needle Art by Marjorie Massey, I guess. This chart is a gift. Please do not share. Mm, sorry, but <laughs> I only showed it to you for a minute. Uh, what else? Now the antique stuff. Okay. Oh. 1800s kitchen bowl. A big one. I love it. This is a lady that goes to the antique show and she's an older lady and from what I understand she sells stuff she's had in her own home for years. This was made in the late 1800s as you can see it's got no maker on it they never do it's heavy it's real this is you can't reproduce something that's got this sort of look to it and feel and even no, it doesn't smell. I washed it. But this one has a handle on it. I don't know if people ever really cooked on this so they put it in the oven. They could have put it in the oven and used and used it a handle. You wouldn't never No, they couldn't have because it's got wood. Um, maybe the handles to lift it. I don't know, but uh, I use these as mixing bowls. I have a few of them. I'm mostly green. I have a yellow one. One day I'll show you, but I love it. I think I'm going to start collecting them. I think I have like four now. Just unbelievable. I just imagine the breads and the cookies and baked goods that was made in here. And this one's 1800s. There's no question. I I saw the color, the colors, and I fell in love with it. I went back three times and kept looking at it. And I was talking to this lady. This particular seller had a sampler and six months ago had a sampler 
sitting in a corner for 20 bucks. It had $50 on it. She said she would have given it to me for 20. The sampler was unfinished. It had a absolutely beautiful border. A part of the middle was missing. I wasn't sure if it was a real antique sampler or not. I looked at it. The condition did not, I didn't see any holes. It, it really was nice. I took a lot of photographs of it and I put it up on a sampler Facebook page and I got multiple messages of people telling me to go back and get that sampler because the border was fabulous and the sampler was real, in their opinion, more than one person. I called the lady, darn it, it was sold. Same lady, nice lady, just nice. She sold me, I've bought a few things from her because her prices are really good. Anyway, um, I figured if I walked away from the bowl and I came back later, it would be gone. <laughs> so I bought the bowl. And then, let me show you what I have. Wait till you see this. Hold on. Oh. Oh, I posted this on the vintage cross stitch niche paid page. It's gorgeous. It's heavy. It's beautiful. The only damage and oh my god. <laughs> the only damage is on the back. And it's not even damage, it's just a little warping. But these are all are we breaking my cabinet? It's got writing inside. I'm gonna look at this writing. And it says Detroit. And now I gotta put all these drawers back. Yes, this is real, folks. I gotta figure out which drawers go where. But it's unbelievably nice. I love this cabinet. I love everything about this cabinet. So, it's a floss cabinet. So now I gotta get the drawers back in. I can get my husband to help me and make sure these fit perfectly. I believe I did that. They're all dovetailed, solid wood. Wood has a beautiful patina, a beautiful smell to it. Um, this was not a cheap one, but it's so nice. Just so nice that I, I had to have it. We got it back. <laughs> no damage done. And I'm going to put my floss in here. It's going to hold all the floss that I have. Um, I thought about selling it. If I sold it, it would have to sell for uh, a good amount of money. I sold a DMC cabinet that wasn't half as nice as this, and I sold that for $200, and I, I put that on the online auction. Uh, you know, this is beyond nice. This is probably 1920s, 1930s, somebody's cabinet. The guy probably kept some t small tools in it or nuts and bolts and, and screws and knickknacks and stuff. It was a machinist cabinet for sure. A small, uh, just a great machinist cabinet. I thought I would show everybody a close-up of how nice this cabinet really is. Look at the wood. Look at the patina. I mean, it's quite special. Um, the price I paid for it wasn't too bad. But um, another one I walked, he said a bunch of people looked at it. Nobody bought it. People came back. They came forth. And I said... You know, I, I went on Hirschner's, who sells the DMC cabinets, and I'm sure it's made in China, or who knows, it's a wooden cabinet. It is very pretty, by the way. But it doesn't have the character, and it's smaller than this. And it's more money than I paid for this. So I said, I'm going to keep it. Now I have to figure out, like, where I'm going to put it. <laughs> I'll figure it out. But 
and probably sell a few other things. I gotta, I always de-stash because I have too much stuff, you know, but just, this is as nice as it gets in terms of antique needlework paraphernalia. So I'm putting that over there. That was a treat, right? Wasn't that a treat? Just a great cabinet. And uh, one more thing came in the mail today. I ordered these scissors on Amazon. They were, um, they're from China. They promised me they're super sharp. I do not have a large pair of sharp scissors like this because people keep using my scissors for all kinds of nonsense. We'll see if it cups fabric properly. Although now I pull the string. It's hard to pull the string on high, on very high count fabric, like 56 count, but I guess they do it at the cross stitch covered, but this is my new scissor. And it was Amazon, it was uh, one of those um, limited time specials, you know, Amazon deals, I think it was 10 bucks. And it does look like it is very, very sharp, so I guess you're not particularly interested. <laughs> Now, last time I said I was going to do this as a giveaway, even though I really do like it, it's beautiful. Christmas sewing book. And it's got the fabric with it, just to show you the fabric again. Um, this can't, this is, picture this plus for sure, fabric. It's got a green tint to it. Um, it's nice fabric and there's a bunch of pieces in here. I have no doubt this is somebody, somebody re-kitted this, but, cares it's, it's nice and you're going to antique it to look like that so the person that wins this if you want me to do this you want me to take this fabric and make it look like this for you let me know and i will i will do it now on the other hand if you don't like the color i come up with i don't want to hear it either <laughs> anyway so um let's do the picking all right first off i have to go to hold on one second we have to go to YouTube. We gotta go to YouTube. And I gotta go to my my um, thing. I put a thing I put an announcement if anybody else wanted today to enter this. They were more than okay. Um let's see what I got. Share. No, nope, we don't want to share. Oh, copy link. Okay. So let's get the winner of this. Um, let's go to um, YouTube Random Comment Picker. Easiest way. I wish I could do this for Facebook, but it won't let me do it because we're a group. This also filters out uh, filters out duplicate users. So if somebody puts more than one comment, my camera ran out of energy. I had to go get another battery. Anyway, let's start the raffle. Of course, this is advertising. Let's get rid of that. Okay, the winner is Rhonda Vignes. Rhonda, can you see it? I don't know, it might be, let's, this is hard, hold on. Here you go. Rhonda Vignes, just to show you. She writes, I love your Santa pillow on the couch, thank you. Don't give up on sewing, round shapes are harder to sew than straight seams, just keep at it. The box with the crack in the bottom is great. Oh, okay. The crack should not matter unless you are going to keep milking it. You know how to find treasures. Best of all is the red shoe shine box. I've never been to Disney, but I do like Daisy Duck. Thank you. Rhonda Vignes, this is yours. Randomly picked. Thank you for your comment. That was actually a very nice comment. I appreciate it. And I do have something picked out for for the next giveaway. Uh, this is a partial kit. It is Plum Street Samplers called A Bowl Full of Mary's, the Mary one. This is for the next, the next video. And it does come with, uh, it does come with the fuzzy chenille and the floss. This is actually a very nice kit. It just doesn't have any, um, for once I don't have a fabric, I didn't put fabric in it, but that's okay. This is a very nice limited edition kit from Plum Treat Samplers called A Bowl Full of Mary's Mary One. Partial kit, all you need is a small piece, a small piece of, I'll, I'll see if I can find something, I'll stick it in there. Um, a small piece of linen or eight or whatever you use, and it, I like the little postage stamp they put on it. Here it is. <laughs> 
put my finger. A little postage stamp, that's cute. In order to enter, uh, don't, you know, don't say you're entering. Uh, in order to enter, you need to uh, answer a question. We have to do a question. Hmm. Okay. What kind of question could we have? What if we've been talking about antiquing? Oh, okay. Do you like antiques? If you do like antiques, what is your favorite antique find? Or if you don't like antiques, tell me what your style is that you like. Maybe you say, wow, I really love clean lines of modern. I love uh, mid-century modern, 1950s pinks and uh, pinks and turquoise. So that's the question and answer it below and um, I will pick it on the next video. That's the way it works. So if you comment on a video that is already, uh, there's been another video to follow it, for example, or it's too late in the game, um, sorry, you're not gonna be entered, but you can enter the next one. So congratulations and we have two more things to do. Somebody commented, about about maybe instead of uh, next, well, I read from the Christmas Carol, but to actually get a Christmas story and read it start to finish. I ordered a Christmas story yesterday. I ordered it. So for our next, uh, the, the book, for our next video, I'm gonna start reading from the book. So every video will have a passage. Today I'm gonna do something different. I've showed you this book before called Stories Behind the Great Traditions of Christmas. And uh, before we go over Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, I'm going to just read, read from this book. And let's see if we can find um, just a passage. There's a whole thing on traditions. It's long. I don't want to read a long one. I'm just looking for one that's pretty short. There's angels. Um, birthday cake for Jesus, Boxing Day, candy, candy canes. And I'll try to summarize it so it doesn't get too crazy long. Oh, this is really long. All right, well, we'll just look at it. It says, there are probably as many legends centered on the candy cane as on any other Christmas traditions. Many of the tales that are known today about this familiar hook-shaped peppermint stick are probably as much fable as fact. Goes. Nevertheless, in the last 75 years, the symbolism of the candy cane, born of legend and now brought to life by a unique striping design, has ma made it one of the best teaching tools of the holiday season. When children began to receive special treats on St. Nicholas Day in the 4th century, hard candy was probably one of the first thing enjoyed because it was easy to obtain. And most peasants did not have enough money to purchase these treats often. The sweet was probably a rare delicacy in most households. I'm just summarizing this. Church history records that in 1670, the choir master at Germany's Cologne Cathedral was faced with a problem that still challenges parents, teachers, and choir directors today. In ancient Cologne, as well as in thousands of churches today, the children in the choir often grew restless and noisy during serv services. Choir master came up with a sweetly brilliant plan. He, he sought out a local candy maker and after looking over the treats in his shop, he paused in front of some white sweet sticks. So the choir master asked if the candy maker, he could bend the sticks and make a crook at the top of each one. The crook would be a way for the children to remember the story of the shepherds who came to visit the baby Jesus. The shepherds carried staffs and canes, and with the hook on top of the stick, the candy now looked like a cane. So that was good. It says, um, within 100 years, white candy canes were being placed on Christmas cheese in Germany. Some may have known the story of the choir master. But more likely, those who hung those treats on the tree did so because the hook made it easy to use. It was easy to hang it on the tree. 
Another persistent legend surrounding the candy cane is tied to Oliver Cromwell's rule in England, a time when Christmas celebrations were banned by the Puritan leader. I did not know this. It is said that during the short historical period, a dedicated Christian confectioner created a candy cane as the way for Christians to recognize each other on the street, like a code. Uh, Europeans must have brought the candy cane with them to the United States before the revolution of 1776, but the treat's identification with Christmas didn't take root until Americans began to celebrate Christmas with presents, trees, and family gatherings two decades before the Civil War, so that would be 1830s, let's say, 1820s. 1820s, 30s, beginning of 1800s. <laughs> It was said that a German-Swedish immigrant, August Imgard, was the first in the United States to use candy canes as ornaments. In 1847, he placed them on a fir tree he had brought, in, brought into his Worcester, Ohio home for the holiday decoration. There are many American Christus, Christmas illustra illustrations in the second half of the 19th century that show the candy cane as part of holiday festivities. By the turn of the century, the candy cane was incredibly popular. In 1920s, Bob McCormick, who ran a small confectionery in Albany, Georgia, found a way to hand twist colors into candy canes. Anyway, there can be little doubt that hard candy has been associated with the holiday season as long as children have looked forward to seeing St. Nicholas. Yet the candy cane that probably first appeared at a church service in the Middle Ages used then as a tool to teach and appease children, has become one of the sweetest reminders of the real season for the Christmas season and one of the few holiday traditions that portrays the meaning of why Jesus was born. Interesting. The story of the candy cane. We're not going to interpret that because there's nothing to interpret. That's an interesting book. There's stuff on all kinds of Christmas traditions, uh, many of which I've never heard of, so it's an interesting book. I look forward to starting a Christmas story next week. Definitely do. And now, the finale. This, I have not opened this yet. I just took the plastic off. It smells like ink. So, once again, this is the 2019 Christmas Mega I Issue. Ne punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. Here is your front cover. Retail price is $14.99, which is a bargain. This is not a throwaway magazine. It's a book. I am only going to show you the, the cross stitch because that's what this is about. We have Rebecca Noland of Lucy Beam, Let It Snow. Show me the picture. <laughs> I wanted to concentrate on that. Very pretty. And it's available, it says here, it is crystal, 32 count crystal spell, feldspar. Available by Stitches and Things. I don't know, I'm not familiar with that. And this was done in Weeks, Weeks Dye Works. Next, Christmas Santa's Ride by Bonnie Loomer of the Nebby Needle. Very, very cute. And that's done on 36 count vintage cedar plank by Late Side Linens. Just a beautiful. And it's done with weak Dye Works as a DMC and Sullivan's uh, conversion. This is designed by Barbara Anna, and this one is called Holy Night. And it's done on Zweigart Vintage Mocha. Wow. It's beautiful. Oop. Holy night. Wow. That's really nice. How big is this? It's eight by eight inches? Well, no, I think that's how much you need. It's the finished side's four by four inches. It's pretty small. 
This one is Sarah's Christmas Urn by Teresa Vinette of Shakespeare's Peddler. And it's done on tea or coffee dyed linen. Whatever linen you want, in other words. Pruny. Sort of like how it's uneven, you see? I like that very much so. Teresa Vinette. This is called Bright Christmas by Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches. <laughs> this is hilarious. It's Christmas chickens. That's so funny. Wow. And it's done on Regency Belfast by Picture This Plus. Wow. This is Joy by Elizabeth Ann Toledo of Dames of the Needle. I like that. It's pretty red. What is it done on? North Pole linen, that's her own linen, which is very pretty. I have it, I have it in my stash. Next we have ads in here. The Creative Twist, uh, the Twisted Ivana uh, Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. And this is her own, this is Teresa Kogut ornament. So this the actual, the actual ornaments, Teresa Kogut, and she has a tutorial of how to finish it. Now, out of curiosity, does she hand sew this? Let's see. She does it. Yeah, she does hand sew. She sews it on her machine. But there's a nice tutorial in here. And she puts on the, um, the trim afterwards, which probably is easier. This is Must See uh, Christmas Xmas must see Xmas scene by Melody Gilmore of Open Road Abode Needleworks. That's cool. I mean, I think that makes it. The old viewer, that definitely makes it. It's awesome. This is a, a CC Christmas ornament by Gula Punti Antici. Very delicate. It's very delicate. It's very pretty. And that looks just like pretty basic fabric. Let's see. It says 30 count linen weeks dye works. It doesn't give you a color. This is called Peace on Earth by Nurnden Canber of Twin Peak Primitives. It's really, really pretty. <sighs> Unbelievable. That's really nice. She does it on Belfast Ada. Belfast Ada Linen, what the heck is that? Belfast Ada Linen. I'm not sure what Ada Linen is, but maybe it's and or. It looks like Ada when I'm looking at the... I think it's... It says 32 count, though. Very pretty. This is Happy Winter by Deb Boudreaux of Rustic Country Handicrafts. This is interesting. I'm showing this to you because it's not real... It's not punch needle. It's... Sort of embroidery, but I love the textures. It's got a plique and beautiful textures, and I guess it's got some embroidery there and lace. It's it's stunning, really. Um, it says punch needle, but I don't see where where it's punch needled. Oh. He's punch needled. Okay. This guy is punch needled. That is not. I mean, I guess there's. Um, I 
Yeah, it's two different things. Very nice. That's Osnaberg fabric. This is called Winter's Peace by Summerhouse Stitch Works. I have this trim. Remember that trim I bought? I showed you last time. It's that is great trim and I own it. <laughs> so that's nice. That's very cute. Winter's Peace. Done on 32 count picture this plus ale with gentle arts threads, embroidery hoop. Um, how big is it? 48 by 78. This is three and a half by four. Oh, I could do this tomorrow. Maybe I'll take that one with me. I don't know. Snowbird. Oh, here we go. Pole to pole snow globe. Lizbeth got shell of thistles. Sort of made to look, I guess, like a igloo. Done on Tin Roof by Weeks Dye Works. This is Let It Snow by Teresa Miller of Teresa's Primitive uh, Treasures. I really like this one a lot. I like something about it. Teresa Miller, Teresa's Primitive Treasures. All nice people. She's very, very nice. I think that's it. Um, there's a, quite a few ads in here, which is good because they're keeping these people of you know, this magazine in business. Um, this Let It Snow reminds me very much of the pillow I did, the Lucy Beam. You see the font? Could be the companion piece to this. This is All Hallows Eve, which I think came out great. And this is Let It Snow. It's a very similar font, but I like this fabric, uh, crystal feldspar. I don't even know what that, what stitches and things is. I'll have to look that up. The question is which one I should do. I could definitely finish this one. I do have fabric to do it on. Although it intrigues me to do the other one with that trim that I have. That trim is, is unbelievably nice. I don't want to do anything too big. I'm going to take this with me tomorrow. And to be honest with you, I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a, a small project with me, you know. I just don't want to take my big, my big thing with me to, down to Fort Lauderdale. Excuse me, what matter? Let me see if I can find that again, just to show you the one where I own the trim. Or, I really like that Teresa Mellon one. So either this one, Winter's Peace, or Let It Snow, Let It Snow Man. I can either do one or the other. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to go see if I can kit this up and then I'll come right back. I'm not going to have you go help me go through everything this will be quickie because these are both small so I'm going to go through I have a like a container of small pieces of fabric so um, you know extra fabric things like that so I'll be back so I decided this is pretty simple so I'm going to take this with me for tomorrow and I already kitted it up I had a piece of mystery fabric it looks I think it's 36 or 40 count. Mystery fabric. It's a pretty color. It's a very pretty color. And it's sort of grungy looking, which is what I'm looking for. And I have some leftover threads. I just went to my thread stash and picked up a bunch of threads that are... I look at the photo and I say, that's pretty close, and that looks good together, and so forth. So we've got all these colors. There we go. And that's going to look just perfect. So if I'm going to make something small, I'm just going to go to my stash and look and see what I have. But this is really pretty. I like that a lot. 
And I'll bring a small frame to put that in and we'll make let it snow for tomorrow. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I appreciate all of the support I've been getting for the website and the, not the website, the Facebook page and for the YouTube page. Please comment below if you want to enter our, enter our contest for next time. It's just a giveaway. And have a great weekend. It's been a pleasure and a privilege doing this. And I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, it's been my dream and it's coming true to do some crafting page, some group, to start a new idea. And I'm, uh, I'm happy. So have a great weekend. From my home to yours, keep stitching.